Hi guys, welcome to another Kamikaze Creation video. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to look at a job that I've done over a couple of videos, and I'm going to put a bit of a compilation together so it's all in one video, but uh, I got my brakes back, which I'm really stoked about. Um, you would have seen over a couple of videos, I took them off, I got the pistons out, um, you know, done little bits here and there, removing the pistons from the calipers, but I took them down to the brake place and uh, he's put a new seal kit in them for me, cleaned them all up, but I'll give you a bit of a closer look at them and then we'll have a look at the process over the uh, series of videos I've done on these brakes and put it all together for someone that might be doing a set of crown brakes, uh, maybe in a Saluka build, maybe in a Toyota crown build, don't know what in, but these are Toyota crown two pot brakes. Let's have a look. Just showing you what I've done to get these uh, brake pistons out, like they'd been sitting real long time and they were pretty much seized in there. So what I've done is uh, hooked them back up to the brake lines and bred the, bled the brakes. And then I just pumped until I got one piston moving and let it come out a bit. And then I clamped it with a clamp and uh, then let the second piston come out and I've clamped it and then if we go over to the other side with those two clamps I basically did the same process so I had my wife help me on this one so I then just clamped one got one piston moving the first one to release uh, let it push out a fair way and then I just put a clamp on it to stop it coming any further and then push the other one out. If you do this and actually pop a piston, you lose all the advantage and you can't use the hydraulics. So you just bring them out as far as you're willing to risk it. Uh, and now I'll send them back down to the brake place. So he's away for a little bit. He's a bit of a part-time brake man and he's got all the seal kits and he'll fix them up for me. I'm just finalising these brake calipers. I've uh, separated the two halves of the brake caliper. And on this one, we just sat it in there again. So I've got the piston out. It's basically a sliding fit on the uh, housing in there, but it had a fair bit of rust and stuff around it. So I've uh, separated these calipers apart and I've gripped this front bit in a vise and just tapping it out and I'll show you that process. Here's the caliper still assembled so I've just got to take the bolts out of it, separate it so that I can uh, then just sit it in the vise and tap it free. Here's uh, one half of the caliper side and as you can see I'm just gripping on the part of the piston that really does nothing. It basically presses on the brake pad face and you can see the surface finish on the edge of it here. It's not interacting with any seals or anything. So I've just grabbed it reasonably lightly there and hopefully with a tap of the actual caliper that will come out. So as you can see, that's uh, come out reasonably easily. I pushed it a fair way out with the uh, hydraulics and pressing the brake pedal. Um, it was only holding on by a little bit, so it's really just uh, holding on to here and giving it a tap and she slides out pretty easily. So there they are, all uh, popped out. The only other point I'd like to make when you're doing this is try to keep it all matched up. Um, keep the right piston with the right cylinder. Um, you know, you never know whether there's variances there. It's good to, when you're doing this sort of thing to keep them matched up. Keeping the caliper halves in the right pairs. And I've just put the bolts back in there as well to just keep them uh, in the right place and I don't lose them. So I'll take them back down because the brake man's already um, bought some seals and you can see down inside that housing there is a little seal just in here that needs to be renewed. There's a few little seals on the outer edges 
Um, I'll get him to clean those pistons up and reassemble them and uh, make them move in and out a bit better. So here's both of the calipers back and rebuilt. As you can see, he's given them, a, you know, a little bit of a clean up. The pads in them were brand new. As you can see, they're nice and thick. And when I get down in it, you can see the new seals sitting down in there. And I'm keen to whack them on and have a look to see how they work applying the brake and letting the brake go. Um, before, I couldn't roll the car. Uh, once I uh, positioned it with the engine running, you then try to push it and it was just locked on so the, the pistons weren't releasing. But anyway, I'll uh, pull the wheel back off and we'll fit one up and we'll do some bleeding and check them out. So I've got the disc off and I've cleaned up all of the bearings. Um, there's still some clean looking grease sitting on the stub axle and I'll just reuse that. I've got some extra grease there just to give it a bit of a, to pack these bearings out. So I'm going to assemble it all up, pack the bearings and slip the disc back on this side. I did this on the... Uh, the larger bearing on the uh, inside of the stub axle, but pack the bearing full of grease, squeeze it down into the cage before you squash it in, and you'll also uh, squeeze a bit up into the centre area and in the cap when you push it on, and that keeps plenty of grease in there. The bearings are all in there and some nice new grease, and it spins quite freely with no play, and I've got the split pin in there. Basically, um, get that locked up reasonably tight until the hole lines up for the split pin and uh, as long as it rotates nicely and she's well greased should be all good. I think I need new caps for this because I don't remember them being on there when I pulled apart so I'll have to get some new grease caps uh, but anyway the rotor's in there and spin them well hopefully when I put the caliper on it continues to do the same. The way I bleed brakes and I've done this for years is to uh, crack the uh, bleed nipple and put a tube on the bleed nipple and run that tube down into a reservoir of brake fluid and you can pretty much pump away to your heart's content you to keep an eye on the master cylinder but the air will come out and it won't let air back in with this method so it's going to take a while to fill up these calipers because they've been empty so i'll need to pump a bit through and then i'll do the other side So those brakes are back on and they're bled up and the nice thing is the rotors spin even after I've taken my foot off the brake. I didn't have that before. So it looks like a successful job. The one thing you need to do through that process, obviously you're pumping brake fluid from the master cylinder down out into that reservoir off the bleed nipple. So I kept transferring the brake brake fluid back up into this reservoir because I didn't want to put air in from the top down again. So making sure you keep that reservoir full throughout the bleed process. And I probably swapped sides. I probably did it about three times on each side. Um, last time it pumped up nicely. It took about five uh, compressions of the brake pedal, but it pumped up. And then I did one more bleed and it's really nice. So there you go, guys. Little cupcakes back on the wheels. Brakes are all bled. I hope that's useful to uh, someone doing these brakes. Remember, they're Toyota Crown brakes on an RA23 Celica. It's a pretty standard uh, upgrade that people did in the day when these uh, cars were being built, and uh, it's been a good success. There's still a little bit of air in them. I haven't bled the back brakes I've only done the front brakes and as far as getting those calipers built that's probably the most critical part you know brakes are one of the most important parts of your car it's good to make it go fast but it's got to stop it's a safety feature so 
I got those calipers professionally built for that reason. Uh, new seals, the pistons all done. You know, they are working beautifully. As far as fitting them and bleeding them, it's not a bad uh, thing to do, to learn to do yourself. Just making sure you've got all your um, bolts tightened up and tension to the correct tension. Remember, I'm not a professional, and if at all you're uncomfortable with doing this, just get someone else to do it. But every hour you spend working on your car is probably... 80 to $100 Australian to uh, save. So as much as you can do, saves you a lot of money. Anyway, thanks for watching.